Howdy, good morning. So I have some links that are a bit concerning that I wanted to cover. Uh, last night, uh, I had went into a little bit of depth on how I feel about the current situations going on, uh, namely the Ukraine conflict, the Israeli-Hamas conflict. And uh, I had said that uh, what I saw with the Ukraine conflict is that it was pretty much wrapping up. Uh, and I, I still believe that. I don't think that there's much of anything left uh, to be able to do with that situation, to be real honest. I don't know. Um, but we are getting all kinds, and sorry for all of the, uh, the notifications, that is an all-day thing. Um, so anyway, uh, there's a lot going on, essentially. And if there was ever a time in which the Bible was describing as wars and rumors of wars, uh, it would be right now because we have so much going on uh, and going in so many directions with so many viewpoints. There is no way to get a good fix on the, the true current situation. I've been doing this for a very long time. One thing I am extremely good at is strategy. And I have been watching this play out the entire time. And there's just a lot of stuff that just doesn't add up. Um, there's, a, there's just a lot of anomalies, we'll call them. Uh, but one of the things that I have noticed, and before we get to the main article that the show is, you know, the video is titled after, um, we, we got to build up to that. Uh, because there's something amiss here. I stand behind my thoughts about Ukraine closing things up. I, I, I also stand behind my thoughts um, that the Israel-Hamas situation uh, isn't going to blow up into something indescribable. Uh, I don't, I, at this point in time, I'm not seeing that. But when I say that about both of those situations going on, if I stop there, it's not enough. Because there seems to be something larger boiling up. And I don't know necessarily if it's directly involved with either or um, any of the situations currently going on. Um, very interesting. It is very, very interesting stuff. So let me get into these articles. I've got, I believe I've got four of them up there. I will leave all the links to every single one of them in the description because that's how I roll, yo. Oh, man. Okay, so first off, let's, let's take this in baby steps here. As you know, uh, politicians far and wide have been talking about uh, discontinuing the support for Ukraine. And so we've been hearing this call by several individuals in the government. Um, we've seen the media report on it nonstop. And here's an article that says, Time running short for U.S. military aid to Ukraine. It says, The chances of the U.S. Congress approving significant aid for Ukraine alongside funding for other causes will be drastically reduced if a bill is not passed by the end of the year, NBC News reported on Sunday, citing sources on Capitol Hill. A clash on supplemental spending is expected after the Thanksgiving recess. So, basically, uh, here's, the, here's the score there. If they wait until next year to approve any more funding for Ukraine, uh, there probably will no longer be a conflict in Ukraine. So they're pretty much done for now. I don't know, to be honest, how much help we give them is going to have an effect on the outcome. I, the only thing is, I think more Ukrainians killed, to be quite honest. So, but we've got some politicians and they're, they're beating this drum here that, oh, time's running short. We're not, we don't know how much longer and how much more we're going to be able to give you, Mr. Z. And uh, and then, you know, you would think that sounds pretty crazy, right? You would think uh, that is insane. Let me get my mouse back so I can do the clicky. And Pentagon chief, look at this, makes surprise visit to Kiev. Huh. So 
let me get this straight. You released information on how time is running short for Ukrainian aid. You released information saying that it may not even come, but then you send this cat to go talk to them in person. Gotcha. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin has arrived in Kiev on an unannounced visit, the Pentagon said on Monday. He held meetings with the Ukrainian leadership to provide reassurance about Washington's commitment to providing military assistance to Ukraine, the statement said. However, no specific new aid packages were announced. I'm here today to deliver an important message. The United States will continue to stand with Ukraine, Austin wrote in a post on X as he shared a photo of himself being welcomed by the Ukrainian officials at a railway station in Kiev. Later, he also said he had talks with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky and once again promised the United States steadfast support for Ukraine. He added that Washington and its allies would provide for both the Ukrainian forces, urgent battlefield needs, and long-term defense requirements. So, which is it? Is it drying up? Or are we making new commitments? I think both is probably the correct answer here. I really do. Um on many levels to be quite honest but this is this is insane so next up we've got nato sends military nato state sends military to russian border now this is what they're saying i'll read the article it says finland has deployed soldiers to reinforce the vardius crossing on its 1340 kilometer border with russia them racist people not wanting people just to go over their border jeez the troops were sent to the checkpoint, one of the four that remain in use, following Helsinki's decision to close southern crossings amid accusations that Russia is funneling migrants and asylum seekers from third countries to the Finnish border. Really? You know, because we have members of our government that's doing the same damn thing to us. What a quinky dink. I wonder, I wonder. Nah. Anyway, it, it continues to say, at the Vardius border station in Kumo, temporary barriers are being built in the border area. Racist people building walls. You see this? The defense forces support the border guard in construction tasks. Helsinki's border guard set on X on Sunday, adding that the soldiers were not involved in controlling the border itself. Ah, that makes it okay. Yeah, that makes that's the cherry on top. That makes it okay. I'm kidding. I don't give a damn either way. But I have to ask, is this really the reason they're sending military to the border? Remember a moment ago when I said it seems like there's something much larger at play here? Russia is moving full force forward. And getting ready. They are they are pulling out the stops, folks. They really are. <clears throat> Here's the article that this video is titled from. Again, all links will be down in the description and first comment. Because for some reason, it's hard to see one or the other on a mobile device. So I put it both places. So it's titled, Destroys London, France, Texas in 6 Minutes. First Sarmat Regiment in Combat Positions, meaning being put into service. Russia goes head-to-head -head with NATO with unstoppable strategic weapon. So let's unbury this. <clears throat> it says Russia is placing the First Sarmat Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Regiment into combat service in the Strategic Missile Forces, according to revelations by TASS, a well-informed source close to the Russian Defense Ministry. The 1st Sarmat Regiment, consisting of several missile silos, enter, enters combat service as part of the Uzher um, Formation of Strategic Missile Forces in December 2023, the source said. According to the existing practice, then the Strategic Missile Forces, a command post of one regiment and two missile silos are first placed into combat service, and then their number is gradually increased. 
In September, the Ministry of Defense had confirmed that the first test launch of the Sarmat development was successfully completed on April 20th of 2022. So you may be wondering, what is the Sarmat exactly? We're going to go ahead and run through this for the people that don't know. The Sarmat, which stands for Satan 2, um, well, I don't know if it means Satan. Uh, that The NATO code is Satan 2. I don't know if Sarmat stands for Satan or not. It's a heavy intercontinental ballistic missile system. The launch weight of the missile exceeds 200 tons, while the range of the missile reaches 18,000 kilometers. Putin first spoke about the Sarmat strategic complex during his speech to the Federal Assembly in March of 2018. A significant part of this speech was devoted to Russia's most advanced weapons and military technology. According to Putin, Sarmat will replace Vovoda, uh, NATO's name Satan. Uh, Vovoda has a range of 11,000 kilometers, while Sarmat has no range limitations, the Russian president said afterwards. The liquid-fueled intercontinental ballistic missile equipped with a 10-ton payload can cover distances of up to 16,000 kilometers, which it said 18,000 earlier. But who's counting? In addition, the missile will be able to carry a combination of thermonuclear warheads and expendable countermeasures to neutralize the enemy's anti-missile defenses. According to Sergei Karakov, the commander of the Strategic Missile Forces says it will uh, take decades for the enemy forces to develop a system capable of intercepting the Sarmat. I would concur. Yeah, I would concur. Uh, it can wipe out France or Texas, London, in six minutes. According to the expert estimates, it can destroy any defense and wipe out entire countries. For example... The little boy atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima had a yield of 15 kilotons of TNT. The RS-28 Sarmat has 15 warheads, each of which contains 750 kilotons, which means that the missile as whole reaches uh, reaches 11,000 kilotons of TNT. As reported by Russian media, the RS-28 Sarmat missile is capable of obliterating areas the size of France or Texas. Russian forces will protect Sarmat with the new S-500 air defense systems. The S-500 system can detect incoming ballistic missiles or aircraft at a distance of 2,000 kilometers. That's reaching out and seeing someone yo. Preparation of the RS-28 Sarmat system for launch is under 60 seconds using a highly automated launch system, which means that in no time it can be fired to engage the enemy. You know, why? while our people are still putting the three and a half inch floppy drives in to reboot the system. Now, you know, just, you know. Goes on to say, London and Russia, London six minutes, as the British newspaper Express wrote, a Russian Sarmat missile could destroy the British capital London in six minutes. Putin puts supersonic nuclear missile on alert capable of leveling London in six minutes, the Express reported. According to the Express, the new development of Russian missiles is a warning to the West. The missile is a monstrous nuclear weapon capable of delivering up to 15 warheads anywhere on the planet. And that would be a fact. And they've got a video of it launching. We're not going to watch it here. But uh, feel free to do so at your leisure. Again, links to be in the description and in the first comment. You know, I believe very heavily in what the, the word says. We are warned about it coming like a thief in the night. And that's why I think it is incredibly important that we remain vigilant, very vigilant. When it comes to nuclear weapons, our entire lives can be turned upside down in a matter of moments. And it doesn't even have to be as a result of a a device going off in your AO. Anywhere in the world, if there is a trade of nuclear weapons, Everybody's going to feel it one way or another. Mostly how I think we'll feel it in the United States, even if there's not a single device set off within our borders. Where we're going to feel it is the loss of imports. 
because I guarantee you that much of the world at that point is going to stand still. Just one more reason to make sure that you've got what you need to hold you over for whatever period of time that you can manage to do. Again, I think there is something much larger at play here that's not actually being talked about, that's not actually in the news. Keep your eyes open, keep your preps near, and be ready. Hope to see you later on for the live show. Shalom.